just uh, this, this wheel is finished. Every wheel that we have here is intolerant. And now I will just turn some nickels to bring it out of shape so I can show you some uh, important things about wheel building, how, how we build our wheels. I have to have some tools, sorry. So that's what I need about. Now I will bring it a little bit out of shape and I will show you how we work on wheels in BT Swiss. And what I can say first is that in BT Swiss every wheel is hand built. We don't have any machine built wheels. We have only hand built wheels. So now it's bad enough. Now I can start. Uh, now you see that I have a, a lot of tolerances here. I have a, a big side kick of more than a millimeter. I have a quite uh, high tolerance also. It's not very good anymore. And now I have to fix this again, everything together. So the first thing that I do always is to make the side kick. This is the, the road that will lead me to the end. The first thing I do, without looking anything else, I will first look at the side kick. So I have to bring it in this tolerances of 0.3 millimeters. Yeah? And this I do by turning spokes left or right in whatever direction I want to go. So now I am in the tolerance for the side kick. Not perfectly 100%, but it's good enough to continue my work. And the side kick is now very important. I have to keep my side kick. When I use this, I can start from zero again. The next thing I'm going to do now, after the side kick, first step, I'm going to put the wheel in the center, so that in the frame it will sit in the center also. This I'm measuring with an external tool. Now here I have 3.0. And on that side I have 2.7. Now I have to make a correction here. So I'm 0.3 millimeters out of the middle. Now I'm going to correct this uh, 0.15 in that direction so that I'm completely in the middle. And this I'm doing by turning the right spokes a little bit so the wheel is going to the right side. As I said, 0.15, and now I have to put back on direction zero again. This was the second step, putting it in the dish, as we say in English, and controlling that again. 3.0, 3.0, now I am really in the middle, now this was second step. Okay. And now we have a third step, that is the height, height kick. Here I have to go one extreme I will put on zero here 
And now I will have to bring it into this tolerance. I have to be in 0 0.4. That's the third step. So now here I'm out of tolerance. So now I'm gonna strengthen this spoke here. But now the problem is I can make better here, but now I'm losing my side kick again. And this I have to make in strengthening also the left side because I may not lose my side kick. As I said before, if I'm losing my side kick, I can start from zero again. So I have to go back into the side kick. And I'm already a little bit better here with the height also. Now the next spoke, the same thing. I will pull back a little bit. And I will go back in the side kick with strengthening also the left ones. So that's what I meant when I said that I, this is the road that is leading me to the end. I have never to lose that. If I lose that, everything else is, I can restart from zero again. So this I'm going to repeat until I am in the head tolerance also. Here is still one. Then the same thing, I'm strengthening it. And back to zero in the side kick. So my, my eyes are always more here than here. So as you see now, now I am in 0.4. I have the height tolerance. So first I had the side kick and the middle and now I have the height tolerance. So now you could think the wheel is done, but it's not because the most important thing is coming now. The most important thing for our wheels in our philosophy is that the is the tension of the spokes. They yeah, have to be as equal as possible. When you have equal spoke tension, then you have a long leading wheel. Because it's like a chain. When you have a, a, in a chain, the weakest part is breaking first. And it's the same thing in a wheel. The weakest spoke is breaking first. So what we do is we try to have it in a high tension and in an equal tension. So we lose a lot of time really on spoke tension. Very, very important tool, the tensiometer here. And now I'm comparing the spoke tension. And I'm looking where I am too low. Here, for example, I am much lower than here, you see. I am, I am here in a, in a good tolerance. These two and this one is very low. So now I have to strengthen the spoke. But now I'm going to have the same problem as before. When I'm strengthening this spoke, I'm losing again my sidekick. And I have again to refine my sidekick with the op strengthening the opposite spokes. So now I'm also here in a good tolerance. Now the next one is too high already. So here I do the opposite. Here I'm losing the sp loosening the spoke a little bit and I'm again losing my side key. So I'm again also loosening the other spokes on the other side and make that my side kick and then I have the tolerance that I want so I do this on the whole high side here the rotor side until I am in every tolerance necessary we do not allow more than 150 newton of differences and this is the second last step now what I do as a last step I'm taking the wheel and turning it to the other side because I have to do the same thing on the lower side. I need an equal spoke tension also on the lower side, which is even more important because the lowest spoke you will find on the low side. And this lowest spoke will break your wheel first. So as last step, I'm turning it around. Fixing it again. Oh, sorry. 
And now here I have lower tensions than on that side, so I have to take another tool for measuring that. That's about the same tensiometer, but for lower tensions. And here now, I'm just comparing first how that spoke. And here you see, here I have also a very low spoke. But here now I cannot change uh, the tension and pulling it higher because then I'm also changing on the high side and that I don't want again. So usually I have two pairs, this one is too strong and this one is too low. So I'm just equalizing these two. That means I'm loosening the high one a little bit. And strengthening the low one are the opposite. And again, I have to respect my sidekick. I don't have to lose the sidekick anymore, because if I lose that, I can start from new again. But now I have here a, about an equal spoke tension. And that I do with all the spokes on that side. And uh, when I have not more than 150 Newton difference on that side, you can say the wheel is finished. So first step side kick, second step middle dish, or we call it in English, the third is the height kick, and the fourth thing is the spoke tension on the high side, and then you have the low side also where you have to equalize the spoke tension. So these are the five steps that are important for a long living wheel. And while I'm doing this normally, because here we are on the next position, I'm, I'm not doing it, I'm just showing. But usually I'm taking the wheel out from time to time and I'm de-stressing it. That means de-stressing means take out the wheel and this I do maybe three to five times while the building process. I'm taking it out and going to a tool. In the company we have a machine for that, but if you don't have a machine for that, you can take something like a, like a tube or something, putting the wheel on and pressing it with full force from both sides. And when you do this three to five times for every wheel, this is like using the wheel, like driving. And then you lose again tolerances, tensions, and you have to refix this again. And that's the way I do this de-stressing until there is no change anymore. So these are the steps that we need for building a good wheel, a hand-built wheel. And that's also the philosophy while TT Swiss building the wheel by hand, because we can measure the spoke tension much better than a machine. And that makes the difference between the quality of an ET Swiss wheel and another wheel. Because usually you have a lot of machine built wheels, but they are not able to measure the tension so exactly. So a little advantage for the human being still. And that's why we decided for a good quality to build the wheels by hand. And how much time does it take to uh, align one wheel? Um, the aligning alone, maybe a new one, maybe 20 minutes. Um, but if I'm doing the whole process from assembling, from lensing, when I have the single parts to finish wheel is about 40 minutes. Because before we, we are chewing it, we have to assemble spokes, hop and rim everything together. So. And how many wheels are uh, ready in one day? Um, that's... Uh, in my case, I'm in prototyping, it might be about 15 wheels a day that I'm finishing like this. That includes assembling, chewing and quality control. And then also putting on a tubeless tape. So, around 15 wheels a day that I do by hand in the prototyping department. Yeah. Fantastic. And uh, what's your name, sir? My name is Michael. Thank you for a wonderful uh, demo. And, uh, thank you. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. It's a pleasure for me. You're very welcome. Yeah. And that's the most beautiful part of my job. Yeah. Have a good day. Have a good day too. Bye. Bye. Thank you.